action potential. And so an action potential you know as a nerve impulse. So that's what a nerve impulse is. Different. So is this like a new thing? This is a new thing. Impulse? I'm going to continue on this drawing. Okay. All right. So we're going to move from a uh, local potential to an action potential. is a local potential and an action potential will occur only when the threshold is reached, that number one. If the local potential reaches negative 59 millivolts, by the way these numbers are approximate, They're, some cells are a little bit different but mostly this is an accurate number. So when the local potentials cause a depolarization to negative 59 millivolts, that's called the threshold potential, that triggers a response in the axon which causes a, an action potential or a nerve impulse to occur. So what exactly does that stimulate? Well, when negative 59 millivolts is achieved, that stimulates the voltage gated sodium ion channels to open up. So these are voltage gated. In other words, they don't respond to a stimulus, one of the senses, but they respond to a voltage change. And what will happen is the sodium ions will come pouring in to the inside of the cell. Remember, this is still the cell. Well, that's weird because it's this long, skinny part of it, but it still is the cell. And so these voltage-gated sodium ion channels open up, and the sodium comes pouring in. And those gates always stay open for exactly one millisecond, a thousandth of a second. So these do not respond to the size of the stimulus. This is an all or nothing response. So these guys stay open for one millisecond always. That is, once they're open, they are open for that amount of time. That's called the all or nothing response. And so it doesn't matter how big this stimulus was over here. What matters is that negative 59 was reached. When negative 59 is reached, this response right here is always the same. That's called the all or nothing. It doesn't depend on the size of the stimulus. Are all the stimulus-gated channels on the cell body and then all the voltage-gated on the axis? Yeah. yeah. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that at the end and put all that together. Think of this as a mousetrap. This one right here is a mousetrap. You can put a little bit of pressure on the mousetrap trigger. I'm not advised that you try this at home unless you're a trained professional, but you can set your finger on the mousetrap a little bit and it won't snap. But once you reach the threshold <coughs> pressure, whatever that is, the trap is going to snap and it always snaps with the same intensity. It doesn't matter if you just tap the trigger or slam the trigger the mousetrap always snaps with exactly the same amount of force. And that's kind of what we have here. Once that negative 59 is reached, this always responds with the same amount of sodium rushing in. Let's. How do you feel to the That's a really good question. I'm glad you're thinking ahead. We're going to get to that at the end. All right? 
Okay, so now we've got the voltage gated sodium channels opening. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow so much sodium to come in that we're going to really head towards what number? What millivolt would you guess we would be heading towards here? We're, we're at we're at what? We're starting at well, we're starting at negative 70 here, right? This was negative 59, which triggered these to open. So we were at negative 70. Which way are we going to head? Towards, Towards zero. zero. In fact, we're going to reach zero, and we're yeah. going to keep going on beyond. We're going to get all the way up to plus 30. So when this gate stays open for one millisecond, so much sodium rushes in that we flip polarity. Why are we at negative 70? I thought we were at negative 59. Negative 59 is here. That triggers these guys to open. Yeah. Remember, it's it's the membrane itself. The, the, it's this point on the membrane where you have a difference in polarity. It isn't the whole cell. So where these stimulus-gated channels were open and you got some sodium coming in, we have a local area of negative 59. But that doesn't mean the rest of the membrane is at negative 59. Okay. Okay? Does that help? All right. Good. Any other questions? Ask your questions because I'm sure uh, you have them. And if you have the question, probably three other people have the same question but are too shy to ask. All right. So we have flipped our polarity. We now have gone to plus 30. And so the inside of the membrane now is positively charged and the outside is negatively charged. And so we can put that, we have a plus charge here and a negative charge there. And negative doesn't mean that negative ions rushed out. It just means that relative to the inside, now the outside is negative or less positive, if that helps you to think that way. OK, so what does that do? Well, when when this one opens for one second, one millisecond, that flips the polarity, and that flip in polarity triggers the next voltage-gated sodium ion channel to open up, and the sodium rushes in, and it flips polarity. And so it was this flip in polarity that triggered these voltage-gated ones to open up, which causes a flip in polarity here. Make sense? Ellie? Does it just like upside down effect? It just keeps going exactly. down the Exactly. Hole. And it's a good way to put it. We have a domino effect because now this one's going to open the next channel, which is going to flip its polarity. So here we know our, well, let's, let's draw it this one. We've got um, the inside of the cell is normally negatively charged, and the outside is positively charged. But when the sodium gates open, so here we'll put a sodium gate, that is going to, different color, in that region, it is going to flip the uh, polarity. And that flip in polarity is going to cause the next gate to open, which is going to flip that polarity. And as Ali said, a domino effect occurs, and this goes on down the line. And that is what a nerve impulse is. It's a, it's a flowing of a flip in polarity. That's really what it is. channel opens, do the sodium ions stay in that exact spot in the axon, like they can't move on down the line by themselves? That's a good question. I'm not sure. Right? See, somehow this polarity has to trigger a gate to open. And I'll, I'll 
be honest, I don't understand how a flip in polarity causes a physical gate, a, a protein, to change its shape and open up. So I'm, I'm not sure. And I suppose it's possible that that positive charge moves over here, which triggers it. Maybe that's a good question. Any others? All right. And now, hopefully, you're going to see how important this all or nothing response is. If you take a baseball and throw it, if somebody's going to hit you in the head with a baseball, all right, where would you want to be standing? I'm going to throw the baseball. Would you want to be standing right here or at the far side of the room? <laughs> yeah, all right. You want to get, for one thing, I probably can't hit you back there. But secondly, if it does hit you, it's not going to hurt so much because it will have lost velocity, right? And, and that's part of the world we live in. We know that as things travel along, they lose their velocity and they lose their force, right? Some of the laws of nature. Well, if that were the case here, by the time that nerve impulse got all the way to the end, it'd be pretty weak and wimpy, wouldn't it? But it's not. It's exactly as strong here as it was here because all of these mouse traps flip with the same intensity. So when this mouse trap springs, it causes this mouse trap to spring, which causes this one to spring, and they all spring with the same intensity. In other words, these gates always open for one millisecond which always allows just as much sodium to rush in as the one before. And so they don't lose any intensity along the way. And that's the marvelous creation. So we have some of these axons that go like all the way from the you know, our, our tip of our toe all the way to our spinal cord. That's a long ways it has to travel or up to the ends of our fingers. The impulse doesn't lose any intensity along the way because it's it's the equal boost every time. All right, any other questions? Yeah. If the gates open for one millisecond, how do we get pain All right. Well, a millisecond isn't very long. A thousandth of a second isn't very long. But you're right. Um, these these um, neurons, if you read in the uh, book, some of these nerve impulses in our faster neurons, and by the way, larger neurons carry impulses faster than small neurons, that is, um, skinny little ones. Uh, it, they travel about 300 miles an hour at their fastest. So 300 miles an hour is pretty fast, and they don't have to go a mile. Right? They have to go like inches sometimes or feet at the most. So that's really, really fast. And so that's how you feel them as quickly as you do. But you're right, it's a good question. You would think, wow, do I have to do all that? I, I, first of all, I, I put my finger on something sharp. That impulse has to go up to my spinal cord, to my brain. My brain has to process it. And then the impulse has to come back to move my hand. Ah, Blood to that, but it happened really, really quickly. Cool. What happens like when you have a job where you touch hot stuff all day and your hands kind of get dead into it? Like, yeah. Does something burn out? You probably burn? your sense your your sensory neurons there at the tips probably get um, um, damaged. I would guess they become desensitized to it, and I'm not sure exactly why. I mean, if you do something over and over and over you get desensitized to it. Like when you first take that first sip of coffee, it tastes so good. By the fifth or sixth one, it doesn't taste quite as good anymore because you've, you've kind of overloaded those sensory neurons there. But if this happens day after day, I would guess that there's some damage probably. Yeah? Um, are nerves right on the surface of the skin? A lot of these receptors are, and some of them are deeper. There, there's both. There's pressure ones that are a little deeper, but the pain ones and so on are right at the surface. All right, good. Okay, well, a couple of things uh, still happen, and that is this. Now that we've got these guys flipped, we got to get them back again. So our sodium potassium pump and uh, gated channels take over. And so what's going to happen is, as soon as this has passed, 
the potassium gates open up and um, potassium then leaves the cell. And that starts to sort out the positive negative thing again so that we go back to uh, repolarizing it. So we depolarized it big time. Now we're going to repolarize it by the potassium gates opening up. But the potassium gates open up just a little bit later than the sodium gates. So it allows all the sodium ions to rush in, positive ones, and then the positive potassiums rush out as soon as it has passed. And it's, that, of course, brings this back to a negative uh, on the inside again. Emily. Okay, so, so these are turning negative, right? But as soon as that has happened, the potassium gates open up and they reset it to, now we're gonna get a whole bunch of positives out here again, which means this is relatively negative to it. And so what you really have is this thing traveling along, this wave traveling along the axon. I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah. Uh, Ellie. Um, are we really polarizing the neuron or are we really polarizing the membrane? Same thing. The neuron membrane is really what it is. The inside and outside of the membrane. Um, are the potassium gates voltage-gated? Yes, those are voltage-gated potassium ion channels. Right. So they respond to this change in voltage as well. And briefly, so much sodium, so much potassium rushes out that the cell actually hyperpolarizes just briefly. But then the sodium potassium pump sorts it all out again. And again, you, you, you're thinking, man, this has got to take like 10 minutes or so, but it doesn't. It takes milliseconds for all this to happen. more things yet. Myelinated cells, myelinated neurons, let's see what color I have here, I haven't used much yet. Let's put some myelin on here. So these are covered with myelin sheaths with little gaps called nodes of Ranvier. And so the white spots are the nodes. In a myelinated sheath, these, these ion flow only occurs at the nodes of Renvier. So it doesn't occur in every continuous spot on the membrane, but it only occurs at the nodes. So the flipping in polarity jumps from node to node to node. And that speeds things up tremendously because the flip in polarity doesn't have to occur at every every lipid molecule along that membrane, but it only occurs at the nodes. And so it can go much faster in a myelinated sheet, uh, neuron than in an unmyelinated. And so we have this polarity flip jumping from node to node. There's a name for that kind of movement. It's called saltatory. book might use another word other than movement. Let me check that a minute. Conduction. Saltatory conduction. And saltatory isn't the term just used for this. Saltatory is also used to describe anything that skips along. So if you were to put a video camera on the bed of a, a stream, a river or a creek or something, you would see sand moving along the, the bottom of the stream, but it doesn't slide along, it doesn't even roll along, it skips along, it bounces along. It's called saltatory.